The New York City subway has 25 services and 472 stations. Today, we will see which New York City subway line is the best of them all. To get an accurate measure of each line, I will be writing every single line from end to end. Since that is going to take a while, I will begin with the IRT and then work out separate versions for the BMT and IND. I will base my ranking off of these four factors, speed, comfort, usefulness, and frequency. Without further ado, let's travel to Flushing to begin my journey. So starting off at Flushing, we will take the 7 local train. First impressions, it is pretty frequent. It is midday and a train leaves every 5 minutes or so. But during rush hour, I know headways can be low as 2 minutes. It helps that the 7 is the answer line from every other service. Also, this local is pretty fast. Like this train probably did a 40 out of the portal. Anyway, Metzwold's point just exists. Without City Field, this station would see like 3 riders daily. And you really can't blame the station because it is located in the heart of Flushing Meadows Corona Park and has rows of parking lots. Anyway, the next stop over is 111th Street, and it is closed for renovation. But my pet peeve is why does the train have to slow to a crawl before speeding up? Negative points for speed here. Also, here are the scene changes to dense apartment buildings and shops. We made more stops, skip 82nd with the same speed restrictions. Other than that, the 7 local is pretty fast considering that stations are placed too close together for my liking. Once we reach 46, we are on a concrete viaduct of the 7. Here, the stations are noticeably better than the ones on those iconic cast iron structures. But is it just me, or why does the train vibrate violently through this section? Negative points for comfort here. Anyway, after Queensboro Plaza, the train sharply curves onto 23rd Street, which obviously kills speed. After Court Square, we arrive onto the LIRR and descend underground, and after Vernon Boulevard, Jackson Avenue, the train goes really fast through the Steinway tubes. As we enter into Manhattan, people start getting off, and finally, we are at 34th Street Hudson Yards, the last stop. And also, is it just me, but is the tunnel between Times Square and Hudson Yards this loud? <laughs> I have been in tunnels that were built during dual contracts, and that was more quiet than this. Anyway, we arrived at the station, and here are my scores for the 7. Speed? That would be a 7. It could be a 9 if it weren't for the delays before the terminal and the slowdowns at 82nd and 111th. Comfort? It was alright, but that vibrating portion between 46th and 33rd plus that very loud tunnel definitely deducts some points. 6 out of 10. Usefulness. It is one of the two main lines into Queens, the fastest growing borough in New York City. So, 9 out of 10. Frequency. Very frequent service. 9 out of 10. Overall, the 7 gets a 31 out of 40. Next, we head over to Harlem to catch the 3 train. So, starting off, the 3 isn't as frequent. It runs every 7 minutes or so, probably because of the 142nd Street Junction. But, I was able to catch the 1 leaving in 3 minutes. So, that was a dub, in my opinion. First station out of the terminal is 145th, and this station holds the distinction of only being able to accommodate the first half of the train. Anyway, the Lenox Avenue line portion is pretty slow for my taste, and nothing interesting happens. At 96th Street, the real fun begins. This train may look old, but definitely packs in some serious speed. Just look at this. And this continues for the entire express run. The speed dies down before chambers and after chambers. After chambers, I understand. Because there is a serious sharp curve that limits speed. In fact, the speed is so restricted that people try and successfully outrun the train here. But before chambers, I don't understand. It is a straight track so a train could speed into chambers. If any operator is watching this, please tell me why trains slow down here. Anyway, we slowly curve our way through the financial district and make our way into Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, the train is just your typical local service. Nothing too mind-boggling here. After Utica Avenue, the 3 goes onto an L. Here you will see the numerous developments, though the 3 does make some screeching noises and slows down to turn onto Livonia Avenue. More developments, then linden shops, then more developments. 
After that, we reach New Lots Avenue, the last stop. My scores for the three. Speed, that is an eight. Despite the numerous slowdowns, the fast portion in Manhattan can't be beaten. Comfort, the train does rock and vibrate violently sometimes, but it is generally okay, so that is an eight. Usefulness, pretty useful. Though I feel like this is a filler line for the two and four. Like the two covers the majority of the route and the four can be extended to new lots. 6 out of 10. Frequency. Pretty bad frequencies. Like 7 minutes during midday. I will pass. 6.5 out of 10. The final score for the three is 29.5 out of 40. Next, we head over to take the four train. First impression? It has an okay frequency, like every 4 to 5 minutes. Definitely beats out the 3 train. The 4 definitely has some good speed, though before Rogers Junction, the train just takes a nap. And it's not one of those delays where the train just stops and starts back up again in 10 seconds or less. We were at that place for 3 to 4 minutes. This is why we need to de-interline Rogers. We pull into Franklin Avenue, and the express here is just underwhelming. I thought that this was the IRT, and they designed your express trains to be fast, but this train is just so slow. We got out of Brooklyn and made our way into Manhattan's east side. Here, the train gets more crowded because of how many people the Lexington Avenue subway serves. Since the 4 train serves at the express, yeah, it is one of the most used services in New York City. Despite it being crowded, the 4 is fast here. A good way of knowing the speed of the express train on Lexington is to see whether the train flies through Astor Place. If it does, then the train will remain fast for the rest of Lexington. This train probably did 40 on Astor, so this 4 will definitely be fast. And as I predicted, this entire express run was fast. But once we were in the Bronx, the train slowed down again. And at 149th Street, we were held. I don't know why. Like no train was merging ahead. Anyway, the train went elevated after 149th Street, and my first impression is that there are a lot of dense developments here. I know that I said that about the 3 and the 7, but man, I have never seen so many dense developments packed so closely together here. Probably because of the fact that there are two train lines plus a commuter rail line in the area. But beneath the L, I have noticed a lot of auto shops, which is interesting. I wonder that if the Jerome Avenue line was a subway, as it was originally supposed to be, would those auto shops exist? The speed on Jerome was okay, and before we knew it, we arrived at Bedford Park Boulevard, one of the more interesting stations on the line. Basically, the station is on an embankment on private land, as opposed to being above Jerome Avenue, so that the route is straighter. We have one more station to go, Mashalu Parkway, which is just roads and a few towers before we got to Woodlawn. My scores for the 4. Speed is a 7.5 out of 10. Lexington was fast, but in the outer boroughs, we were subject to delays and the Eastern Parkway Express was just underwhelming. The 4 is okay for comfort, so 8. The 4 is useful, especially on Lexington, so 9 out of 10. Finally, the 4 is frequent, but not to my liking, so I give it a 7.5 out of 10. The total for the 4 is a 32 out of 40. Our next target is the 42nd Street Shuttle, and this is a hike from the Lexington platforms. Negative points for comfort here, as if you are making me walk the entire length of Queens just to go cross town, that is just some horrible planning. We then arrive at the platforms, and since they did renovations here, the platforms are extra wide. A shuttle was pulling into the station, so I got into that one. The frequency here is every 5 minutes during rush hour, which is okay. After 5 minutes, the train shut its doors and went pretty fast for 10 seconds. It then slowed down significantly, and it was ages until we pulled into Times Square because of that bumper block ahead. My scores for the shuttle. Speed. That is a 6 out of 10. That slow section before Times Square is the reason why. Comfort. You do have to walk a lot in Grand Central, but the train is okay, so that is a 7. Usefulness. It is alright, as it provides extra service for the 7 downstairs, so that is a 7.5 out of 10. Frequency. 
It is frequent, but not to my liking. 7.5. So the shuttle in total gets a 28 out of 40. I took the 7 Express next, and this train is frequent. Like, I'm talking about a train every 3 to 5 minutes. Anyway, the section in Manhattan is pretty much like the 7 local, so I'm just going to skip that. But at Queensboro Plaza, the real fun begins. The train switched onto the third track, and yeah, this train went fast. Like, we whisked through every station in like 10 seconds. The train stops at Woodside, and the next express run is probably my favorite in the entire system. Since this is a straight track, the train can go insanely fast. My favorite part is when the train does a good 40 through Fisk interlocking. And just by hearing the sound, you know that this train packs in some serious speed. Another one of my favorite parts is when the train skips 90th Street, as that is the fastest part of the express run. Before we know it, we arrive at Junction Boulevard, and here a lot of people get off. Then the train makes its last express run to Willits Point, and when skipping 111th Street, you can get a nice bird's eye view here. We got to Willits Point before going into a tunnel to Flushing. My pet peeve with Flushing is that trains slowly inch their way into the station because of the bumper blocks, and this train was no different. Anyway, my scores for the 7 Express. Speed, that is a good 9.5 out of 10. Would be perfect if it wasn't for Flushing and the slowdowns at Queensboro Plaza. Comfort, same as the 7 Local, but this train can get crowded. I caught this train just outside rush hour, so it is okay. But there are times during rush hour that I couldn't get on the train and this was like the third stop the train made. But since this train was going fast, I can forgive some of it. 7 out of 10. Usefulness. Extremely useful if you need to get to any of the express stations or flushing very quickly. 9.5 out of 10. Frequency. Very frequent. 8.5 out of 10. So the 7 Express gets a 34.5 out of 40. We then head to South Ferry to catch the 1. The 1 runs pretty frequently, like every 4 minutes, so that's good. It helps that the 1 doesn't run on South Ferry Loop anymore, meaning that capacity can be increased. We got out of South Ferry and made our way uptown. The train made a ton of stops, way too many for my liking. The section from 14th to 34th is the most egregious, as in less than 2 miles, this train stopped like 5 times. But despite the insane number of stops, the one is fast. Also, the stations here are some of the best designed in the entire system. Like, look at this. As someone who doesn't really care about station design, this definitely impresses me. Anyway, when we got to 96th Street, the 2 and 3 trains separate from the 1. Nothing much happens for the next three stations, but then we go elevated to 125th Street. This is because of the topography here, and tunneling here would subject the train to go up and down 100 feet, which made it infeasible to tunnel. So even though the one here is elevated, 125th Street is about the same level as 116th and 137th Street. This easily makes 125th Street one of the most unique stations in the entire system, and is probably one of my favorite stations in the entire system. We then go back into a tunnel at 137th Street, and after 145th Street, we were now in a deep tunnel. Most of the stations here are more than 100 feet below the surface. We pass by these stations, but something very funny is that once we leave 191st Street, the deepest station in the entire system at around 191 feet below the surface, the next stop over at Dykeman is elevated. Funny how Manhattan topography works. That is not the only interesting fact about the one. We cross the Harlem River into Marble Hill, and we are still technically in Manhattan. This is because Marble Hill was part of Manhattan before it was split so that the Harlem River can be straightened. And since we are so far north, and Manhattan is located on a tilt, this station is the easternmost in Manhattan. It's not East Broadway or Roosevelt Island, it is Marble Hill 225th Street. We then make our way through the Bronx, and the last stop is 242nd Street. My scores for the 1. The 1 is overall pretty fast, but there are certain sections where we stopped so many times that I felt like a turtle can outcrawl it. 7.5 out of 10. Comfort. 
Overall, it was a very comfortable ride. 8.5 out of 10. Those colorful stations probably helped. The one is a very useful service, and serves the dense upper west side very well. 9 out of 10. Frequency. It is pretty frequent, so 8 out of 10. The final score for the 1 is 33 out of 40. We then headed for the 6, and I was a bit shocked to find out that the 6 runs every 7 minutes in the Bronx. I thought that it was every 5 minutes because of the split between expresses and locals, but 7 is way more than I thought. The train left Pelham Bay Park and we made our way south. There were some dense developments, but they were in the distance, and I saw so many highways. Like, I saw like 5 highways on the elevated section, which meant that every other station would have a highway. That's absurd. And then people wonder why the Bronx has some of the highest rates of asthma in New York City. Anyway, the 6 is just slow, and there are so many stations packed together, meaning that any speed that we can get will just get axed. We left the Bronx and here we are in Lexington. Nothing too interesting, other than the fact that the 6 can get pretty crowded because it is in Lexington. It is just your typical slow local train that makes a ton of stops. If you can, just take the 4. We got to Brooklyn Bridge, the last stop of the train before it loops back uptown. My scores for the 6. Speed. It was just meh. Very slow. I'll give it a 6. Comfort. There were so many twists and turns on Pelham that impacted comfort. Though in Lexington, it is more like a straight shot. I'll give it a 7. The 6 is a pretty useful route, as it is the only local line that served the entirety of Eastern Manhattan and the Eastern Bronx. So I'll give it an 8. Frequency. If you are in Manhattan, you can expect a train every 2-3 to three minutes, which is great. But if you are in the Bronx, well, double that and give it to the next person. I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. So the total score for the 6 is 28.5 out of 40. I then headed to take the 5, and yeah, I was hit with some atrocious frequencies. Like a 9 minute wait for a Nareed bound train, and a 14 minute wait for a Dyer bound train. There was probably some delay, but even so, the wait times for a 5 is still pretty bad, as it is every 6 to 8 minutes for one train rush hour. And if you want to go to Dyer, then add a good 3 to 5 minutes to that. Yeah, I was thinking about doing the 5 another day, and taking the 2, but decided against it because I wanted to experience the 5 Express in the Bronx. After waiting 14 minutes for the 5 to Dyer, the train finally left. The 5 made stops along Nostrand, which is just your typical subway train making stops. Rogers was okay. I guess it wasn't like the 4 where the MTA scheduling department screwed up. The Eastern Parkway Express, like the 4, was just underwhelming. We left Brooklyn and entered Manhattan just in time for rush hour. But the 5, unlike the 4, was slow. Remember how I said Astor Place is a good way of checking speed? Yeah, the train just crawled through that station. And as I expected, the Lexington Express was horribly slow. Any time that I thought the train was making some serious speed, the speed just died down. And it's not just on Lexington. When we got to the Bronx, we had to inch through that C-curve just to get onto White Plains. We got onto the express track, and yeah, this is just mid. Every time the train made some serious speed, the train just died down, which angered me. And also, just take a look at this glorious curve that deletes speed. Once we got to East 180th Street, a 2 train was already there, which meant a game of delay would have to be played. The switches to the Dyer Avenue line are not directly accessible to the express tracks, so the 5 would have to cross in front of the 2, causing delays. Here we got somewhat lucky, as the 5 was picked to go first. Anyway, the 5 makes its stops, and we end at Dyer Avenue. My scores for the 5. The speed on the 5 is just horrible. I expected more from the 5 because it is an express line, but no. This train has garbage speed. 4.5 out of 10. Comfort. There were so many twists and turns on White Plains that negatively impacted comfort. 7 out of 10. Usefulness. If you're willing to wait 10 years for a 5, it is pretty useful because it connects to the Northeast Bronx to the east side of Manhattan. 8.5 out of 10. Frequency. The 5's frequency is just a complete joke. Like 14 minutes for a dire bound 5 during rush hour 
I know that this is not average, but as a frequent Lexington rider, the 5 comes in every 6 to 8 minutes during rush, and I see the 4 more often, 5 out of 10. The total score for the 5 is a 25 out of 40. I then headed to take the 2 at Wakefield 241st Street. The frequencies here were tolerable, like a 2 every 4 to 6 minutes. That's way better than the 5 where I had to wait 14 minutes for 1. Starting off, the 2 was okay. It is just your typical train making stops. A ton of stops. Like, I'm talking about 20 stops on White Plains. But I will say, they are more reasonably placed than the 1. We got to East 180th Street where the 5 merges with the 2. Now we are on the lower portion of White Plains, and nothing too interesting here. Just a bunch of twists and turns because this L is from 1904. We got to 149th Street Grand Concourse, and here, two things happen. The 5 will split off from the 2, and the 3 will merge with the 2. We got to 135th Street, and the Lenox Avenue line is just okay. Except we were held at 125th Street for a few minutes, which was annoying. We made our way to the 7th Avenue line. Here, I thought the 2 was going to be as fast as the 3, but I was mistaken. From 96 to 42nd, the train flew. But from 42nd to Chambers, the train was like, meh, and just gave up. After that, the train went through that horrendous curve after Chambers, and it was just pretty much the same as the 3 train to Franklin Avenue. Your typical local train. Then the train went on to Nostrand, and again, it is your typical local train. Though the train slowed down before Flatbush Avenue, because it is a terminal station. But it could have been worse. I once took the train to Nostrand, and a train from Beverly Road inched its way to Flatbush. This is why Nostrand needs to be extended. Not just because it will take congestion off Nostrand Avenue, but you can now run more trains. Anyway, I got to Flatbush Avenue, and here are my scores for the two. Speed? It is okay. 7.5 out of 10. The 2, like the 5, has so many twists and turns, but it is bearable. 7 out of 10 for comfort. The 2 is an insanely useful route as it connects so many neighborhoods to the central business district. 9 out of 10. Finally, the frequencies aren't too bad, but it can be better. 8 out of 10. My total score for the 2 is 31.5 out of 40. My final train is the 6 Express. Starting off, this train immediately became packed. I took this train at 4pm, which is barely rush hour, and somehow I am struggling to breathe here. The train became so insanely crowded that I couldn't take proper footage of the train. After all, this subway moves 1.3 million people daily, larger than entire US cities. So yeah, built the 2nd Avenue subway. Anyway, we got to 125th Street just in time to see the massive amount of people transferring. Like, I know that ridership is reduced, but this is still insane. And to know that this is not the height of rush hour frightens me. At least the train is less crowded now. We got to the Bronx, and the fun began. The 6 Express skips 9 stations. And starting off, this speed is not impressive. Like, come on, I thought this was the Express, and you give me this speed? The 6 Express does get progressively faster, though not at 7 Express train levels. We got to Hunts Point Avenue, and this is where the 6 goes elevated. Here, the 6 is better with speed, but good things don't last forever, as right before St. Lawrence Avenue, the last stop the express skips, the train slowed down. Also, we see a 6 local train, which means at Parkchester, there will be a chance that we get delayed because of the local trying to turn around here. We got to Parkchester, and lucky for us, this train got to leave first. And we are now switching back to the local track because unlike the 7 Express, the 6 Express makes all stops after Parkchester. Nothing interesting happens here except Westchester Yard. We got to Pelham Bay Park, the last stop on the 6 Express. Here are my scores for the 6 Express. The speed is just mid. It starts slow, then speeds up, then slows back down again. 7.5 out of 10. Comfort. This is not a sparsely populated train as this train got so crowded that I can't move. Combined with the numerous twists and turns on Pelham, it wasn't so comfortable trying to balance myself. 6.5 out of 10. Usefulness. This is a pretty useful line, as it skips 9 stations and can get you to the Eastern Bronx relatively quickly. But that time save might not be so impressive 
considering that the 6 Express is slow. I will still give it an 8. The 6 Express is a pretty frequent line, like every 5 to 7 minutes, but not to my liking. So, 7 out of 10. The total score for the 6 Express is a 29 out of 40. Anyway, this marks the end of this video. So right now, in the lead is my beloved 7 Express train, with a 34.5 out of 40, with the runner-up being the 1 at 33 out of 40. These are obviously my opinion of each train, and you can disagree with me. But if you do, please let me know your thoughts on any train here. I am trying to work out separate versions for the BMT in IND, so stay tuned for that. Have a good one.